بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لسان يفقه قولي يا ربي بالمصطفى بلغ مقاصدنا واغفر لنا ما مضى يا واسع الكرم الحمد لله All praise be to Allah سبحانه وتعالى He has gathered us on this blessed day in the month of Ramadan from amongst the last ten days of the blessed month of Ramadan in order that we may remember an individual who is remembered by Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wa Sallam and beloved to Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wa Sallam because Allah loves when we remember those that are beloved to Him and Allah's Qur'an is filled with the stories and the remembrance and the dhikr of those that are beloved to Him and the Prophets and the Messengers and the Righteous and the Pious whether in direct reference or indirect reference that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala speaks of their qualities and from amongst those great, immense individuals, a person whose mere name stirs bravery and courage in the hearts of people and stirs love within the hearts of people, I'm merely mentioning his name, creates a longing to be with him. It's Sayyidina Ali, Karam Allahu Wajhahu Al Kareem, Wa Radi Allahu Ta'ala An, Wa Alayhi Salam. That immense Sahabi of the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam, the likeness of whom this world has never seen that individual who is the cousin brother of the Prophet and whose lineage was exactly the same lineage as the Prophet except at the level of their fathers and their, uh, the level of their parents so to the grandparents their lineage is exactly the same of the Prophet Muhammad and Sayyidina Ali Karamallahu Ajul Kareem and he is that individual who uh, the Prophet ﷺ called him his brother. Some beautiful instant incidents. When we look at the likes of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala an, he is praised and he is immense. And his suhbah with the Prophet ﷺ is mentioned in the Quran when he spent time in the cave with the Prophet. ﷺ. This, this is one of the great blessings of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq that he had that. Uh, close time with the Prophet ﷺ. but we often forget about Sayyidina Ali that he grew up in the household of the Prophet ﷺ since he was a child into well into his 20s imagine this is an individual who was forged in the household and the company of the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ and Sayyidatuna Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha what an immense individual. And this is an individual whom the Prophet ﷺ left in his place when he migrated to Mecca al Mukarramah and he entrusted him to give out his uh, the trust that had been left with the Prophet. ﷺ. This that Sayyidina Ali Karim. This that person that when he reaches Medina al Munawwara. And the Prophet ﷺ pairs the Muhajireen with the Ansar. He pairs them off. So people who had migrated from Mecca to Mukarrama, he paired them with somebody who was from Medina to Munawwara. And he made them brothers that they may look after one another. Everybody was paired off apart from Sayyidina Ali Karamallahu Wajul Kari. And he says, Yeah, Ali Sayyidina Ali says to the Prophet, ﷺ, Ya Rasulullah, you've paired everybody else off except for me. The Prophet ﷺ said to him, Ya Ali, anta akhi fi dunya wal akhirah. You are my brother in this world and in the hereafter. In other words, I am your partner in this in, in this situation. Allahu Akbar. He is that individual that uh, he, he was there in all of the battles, except for the Battle of Tabuk, when the Prophet ﷺ had made him the deputy in Medina to Munawwara. Yeah, he left him as his deputy in Medina to Munawwara. And in the Battle of Uhud, he received 16 wounds. Radiallahu ta'ala an. You know, Sayyidina Ali, subhanallah. You know, when we when we mention him and remember him, it stirs such immense love in our hearts. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us in, in perpetual love for Sayyidina Ali, karamallahu wa kareem. A person of immense closeness to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa from amongst his titles, the Lion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
the Prophet ﷺ mentions in the time of Khaybar that I will give the flag and the raya in the hands of one who is beloved to Allah and His Messenger and who loves Allah and His Messenger. He loves Allah and His Messenger and Allah and His Messenger love Him. There is no greater and more complete rank than that. To be a person whose love is attached solely with Allah and the Prophet ﷺ and a one who receives the bushra that Allah and His Messenger love you. A person of Jannah. In fact, he is the adornment of Jannah. He is not increased by his presence in Jannah, but Jannah is beautified by the presence of the likes of Sayyidina Ali Karamallahu Jul Kareem in it. Yeah, Sayyidina Ali, no words can do him justice. He is the one whose mother wanted to name him Haydar, the lion, because her father's name was Asad. Yeah, the mother of the Prophet uh, of Sayyidina Ali is Fatima bint Asad. So her her father's name was Lion. And there's over 300 words and names for lions in the Arabic language according to different stages of their development and uh, and so she she wanted to call him Haydar which is another word for a lion uh, but uh, uh, Abi Talib the father of Sayyidina Ali Karamallahu Jal Kareem called him Ali meaning Ali Ushan you know a person of great rank and immenseness and Sayyidina Ali Karamallahu Jal Kareem's mother is that woman who looked after the Prophet ﷺ from approximately the age of six up to the age of 25 when he got married. It's beautiful. The Prophet ﷺ grows up in the household of the parents of Sayyidina Ali Karamallahu Ajul Kareem and Sayyidina Ali grows up in the household of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi wa Sahbihi wa Sallam. Beautiful relationship between the two. Immense relationship between the two. And he is that person and inshallah, today's talk is more looking at Sayyidina Ali and, and seeking knowledge and, and knowledge, and we will come to that. But just to give us a taste of his immense rank and somehow to try and fathom who he is, which we can never fathom, you know. But Sayyidina Ali, Karamallahu Ajul Kareem, he is that individual whom the Prophet ﷺ referred to and said, Ana Madinatul Ilmi. وَعَلِيٌ بَابُهَا That I am the city of knowledge and Sayyidina Ali is its door. In other words, there is no entry into the city except through its door. You have no entry into that. If you enter, then you've entered into the Prophet And if you leave that door, then not only have you left Sayyidina Ali, but you left the Prophet Muhammad yeah. And remember, knowledge is is ma'rifa knowledge in islam is gnosis is to know things according to their reality the knowledge is the inheritance of the prophet if you want to take the inheritance from the prophet you take it through sayyidina ali and this is why every single tariqah has a connection with sayyidina ali in terms of spirituality he is the spiritual master Sayyidina Ali Karamallahu Ajul Kareem. And we marvel at Sayyidina Shaykh Abdul Qadir Al Jilani, Rahmatullah Ali, Al Hassani, Al Husseini. Yeah. Imagine his, his great grandfather, Sayyidina Ali. If that's the rank of one of his great, 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 great grandchildren, imagine the rank of the great, great, great grandfather, Sayyidina Ali Karamallahu Ajul Kareem. Sayyidina Al Shaykh Abdul Qadir Al Jilani, Rahmatullah Ali, is a drop in the ocean of Sayyidina Ali Karamallahu Ajul Kareem. And so Sayyidina Ali is that immense individual who um, he opens his eyes and the first person he sees when he is born is the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa It's narrated that he's born inside the Kaaba. And we were talking about his mother. His mother is that individual who when she is passing away, she passes away with her eyes fixed on the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa She passes away in Medina al munawwara in Al-Baqi'ah. Yeah? And the Prophet ﷺ clothes her. Her kafan was the shirt of the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. And he buries her with his own hands and he makes dua for her. And he refers to her as his mother after his mother. SubhanAllah, why that's right. And just finally to mention that Sayyidina Ali Karamallahu Ajul Kareem is the one through whom the lineage and the progeny, the Ahl al Bayt of the Prophet ﷺ continue through him. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed 
the continuation of the progeny of the Prophet ﷺ through his daughter Sayyidina Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha and her husband Sayyidina Ali karam Allahu wajhul kareem that Allah married him to his beloved daughter you know, that immense you know from amongst the four greatest women Sayyidina Ali he, he married Sayyid, Sayyidatuna Fatima and this is why you can understand uh, Sayyidina Ali's tafsir of the ayah he says that the interpretation of hasana in this world is a righteous, pious spouse. Yeah. The tafsir of that dua for him was Sayyidina Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha. He is the father of Sayyidina Imam Hassan and Sayyidina Imam Hussein. And we know their rank and their position. Allahu Akbar. So moving to some of the states of knowledge and Sayyidina Ali grew up absorbing the knowledge of the Prophet ﷺ from a very young age and we'll just talk about some of the glimpses and the reference that we will take uh, the, the place that we'll take these references from are uh, the book of Imam Jalaluddin al-Suyuti uh, in his book Tariq al-Khulafa and he mentions in there Abu Nu'im narrated in a dalail from Ja'far bin Muhammad that his father said Two men were brought before Sayyidina Ali in a dispute. And so he sat at the base of a wall. A man said to him, the wall will fall down. Sayyidina Ali said, carry on. Allah suffices as a guardian. And we see in this his immense uh, connection and tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That knowledge isn't just narrations that we reel off our tongue and that we memorize. But these are narrations which... Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes a reality within certain people and so he lived the reality of tawakkul yeah? so this wall was about to collapse Sayyidina Ali is leaning against it, the person says Ya Ali, the wall's going to collapse, move away he says you carry on Allah is my protector he passed judgment between them, stood up and then the wall fell down Ya yeah, Allahu Akbar um and, and look at his connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, he was a wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Man li waliyan faqad bil harb. Whoever goes against one of my awliya, then I will declare war upon him. And also a sign of a wali is what? Yeah. That if he asks of me, surely I will grant it to him. In the hadith of Qurb al-Nawafir. So look at this narration. At-Tabarani narrated in al-Awsat, in Abu Nu'im, in al-Dala'il. From Zidhan, that Sayyidina Ali Karam Allah was relating a hadith and a man accused him of lying. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. How can you accuse Sayyidina Ali of lying? Sayyidina Ali Karam Allah said to him, Shall I supplicate against you if you are lying? He said, Supplicate. Look at this person's arrogance. Didn't know his limits. Sayyidina Ali gave him an opportunity. He said, Look, if you're lying, do you want me to make dua against you? Because you're the one that's lying against me. And this person, instead of uh, taking that opportunity to seek forgiveness and change his ways, in arrogance, he said, go and supplicate. Sayyidina Ali Karamallah Wajul Karim supplicated against him and he did not leave before his eyesight went. He lost his eyesight. In other words, for calling Sayyidina Ali a liar, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took away his tawfiq to now once again look at the blessed face of Sayyidina Ali Karamallah Wajul Karim. It's the rank. And this is true knowledge. They bequeath in you a maqam and a rank with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The light, the knowledge is a light from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. And subhanAllah said that Ali karam Allah wa kareem, he was immense in mathematics. You'll see many uh, issues of where people could not resolve them and they would come to Sayyidina Ali karam Allah wa kareem. You know, there's examples of where Sayyidina Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala an, he sends issues and fatwas to Sayyidina Ali to resolve. Yeah, Even though there's a difference between them. But Sayyidina Muawiyah, he knew when it comes to knowledge, have no option but to turn to Sayyidina Ali karam Allahu wa kareem. Yeah, He was the advisor in the time of Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Siddiq and Sayyidina Umar and Sayyidina Uthman. In fact, one of the reasons for the success of Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Sayyidina Umar and Sayyidina Uthman in their time is because they had the advice of Sayyidina Ali Karam Allah yeah. They had the support of Sayyidina Ali Karam Allah yeah. That's why, and unfortunately, when it came to Sayyidina Ali's time, 
he didn't have the likes of those who the previous Khulafa had. They had him, he didn't have them. Yeah. And so, even though Sayyidina Ali was successful in his Khilafa, he fulfilled the amana, but there was immense trials and tribulations. He was a man on his own. Yeah. He didn't have the support that he gave to the other Khulafa, he didn't have that support, unfortunately. But he is the lion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Listen, this is a slightly lengthy uh, uh, incident that takes place, but it just shows you the brilliance of his knowledge of mathematics. Yeah? And it shows you that when it comes to knowledge, knowledge isn't just uh, religious knowledge in the sense of knowing the Quran and knowing the hadith, but it is what? It is also knowing the academic sciences and they as well are Islamic. We should not think mathematics is secular. What does secular mean? Disconnected from Allah. No. Mathematics is Allah, what Allah has told us that verily we have made everything in measure. And so when we delve into science and we delve into maths and we delve into these issues, it allows us to see the, the brilliance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation and understand his creation to a degree. You know, for example, why do we believe the 27th night is Laylatul Qadr on a dominant opinion? Because Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu an, he sees the Quran through mathematics. He says Laylatul Qadr has nine letters and it's mentioned three times in Surah Al Qadr. Seven uh, three, nine times three is 27. So it's the 27th night in Ramadan. You see how the Sahaba, they use their academic sciences, but they used it for Islam. The, the, the academic sciences do not draw people away from Allah and His Messenger, but in fact, they draw us closer to them. Yeah. Um, this is very lengthy. It's almost a whole side to go through, but you know, ju just... Subhanallah, it's so beautiful when I read this and I'll leave this for you to acquire this book and to read it for yourselves inshallah because it's quite lengthy and it will mean that I won't get to mention some of the other aspects Yeah. so uh, when we see Sayyidina Ali's scrupulousness you know from his knowledge that Sayyidina Ali Karamallahu Ajul Kareem that he would uh, look at his tawadu'ah that his knowledge bequeathed a level of humbleness within him you know for some people knowledge can become a means of arrogance Sayyidina Ali was humbleness look Sayyidina Ali Karamallah Wajal Karim used to sweep out the Baytul Mal and then perform a prayer hoping that it would be evidence for him that he had not stored wealth within keeping it away from the Muslims uh, that he is in charge of the Baytul Mal and he is not you know he's sweeping it he's looking after it and then he's making dua that, Ya Allah, do not make me of somebody who is who doesn't give it to who it, deserve, who, who it belongs to and who keeps it for himself. Sayyidina Ali had no uh, hirs for the dunya, didn't want hirs for the dunya, didn't want this dunya. And one of the other things when we're relating to knowledge is very, very crucial and, uh, and important to understand. And that is that Sayyidina Ali, Karam Allah, Kareem, is directly... Uh, uh, connected and is directly in uh, the, the means of the preservation of the Arabic language. Directly. Credit goes to him. And if we didn't have the preservation of the Arabic language, we would have lost the Quran and the Hadith, just like previous nations lost their books. Why was the Torah lost? Why was the Injil lost? Because people neglected the language. They didn't preserve the language. And then they went into translation and went in from one thing to another. And there's other, other elements of the lack of the preservation of those books. But the preservation of the Quran is partially through the preservation of the language of the Quran, the Arabic language. So we see this incident. Very famous student of Sayyidina Ali, Karamallahu Ajul Kareem, Sayyidina Abu, uh, Abu Aswad al duali yeah? radiallahu ta'ala an. He mentions... Um, that my grandfather, Abu Aswad, the person who's narrating, he's saying, my grandfather. From his father, he, I entered upon the Amir al-Mu'mineen, Sayyidina Ali bin Abi Talib, Karam Allah Kareem, and I saw him with his eyes lowered deep in thought. I said, what are you thinking about, O Amir al-Mu'mineen? He said, I've heard in this city of yours mistakes in the use of Arabic. Yeah. And I want to make a book on the principles of Arabic. Subhanallah. He is the founder of the Arabic language. 
in terms of its qawaid and its grammar and the way that we have it, the form that we have it now. I said if you... Um, and I want to make a book on the principles of Arabic. This is what Sayyidina Ali Karmallahu Wajul Kareem said. I said if you do this, you will give life to us and this language will remain among us. Later after three days, I came to him and he gave me a page in which was in the name of Allah, the merciful, the compassionate. And then Sayyidina Ali starts uh, the beginning of the formulation of uh, Arabic grammar. So he had immense knowledge. He was in- immensely advanced. Sayyidina Ali Karamallahu Wajul Kareem. Yeah. He had the ability to read and write. Sayyidina Ali did. And uh, so he places down the, the aspects of, of Arabic grammar. Sayyidina Abu Aswad the duali the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sayyidina Ali then tells him, yeah, he says, then walk upon this path. Inhi had al nahu. And that's where the word nahu comes from, grammar. That he, Sayyidina Ali said, walk in this direction. Nahu can also mean a direction or a path. Yeah? So the very name comes from Sayyidina Ali Karamallahu Jul Kareem. Then Sayyidina Abu Aswad al duali Rahmatullah Ali, radiallahu ta'ala an. He comes back and he forgot certain parts. Sayyidina Ali corrected him and told him, rectified his book. Yeah? Look at some of the sayings of Sayyidina Ali Karamallahu Jul Kareem. Yeah? That Sayyidina Ali said, be among people as the be. And this is the thing that we see about Sayyidina Ali, immense wisdom. A depth of wisdom that is unseen, unheard of. And, and with that, immense eloquence. Both of those things. Rare to come together in a person. Supreme genius, yeah? and with that, you know, prophetic eloquence in him. Subhanallah. Sayyidina Ali says, Be among people as the bee is among birds, for there is no bird that doesn't regard it. The bee is insignificant. Bees, they, they fly around, birds fly around around them, they don't see them as significant. If the birds knew what blessings there is in its belly, they will not do that to it. They would consider it as, as, as great, the bees. Mix with people, and this advice of Sayyidina Ali, which we should all take on. Mix with people with your tongues and your persons. Yeah, so we speak to people and we interact with them at work. We travel amongst people. So he's saying, look, speak to people and, and you're going to you know, pass by people and you're going to interact with people. Do that, just like bees and birds pass each other. And be separate from them in your actions and your hearts. So when you're amongst people, especially this is important for us living in non-Muslim lands, surrounded by non-Muslim traditions and habits and routines, that yes, we're amongst people with our speech, we speak to them and we interact with them, we're amongst them in our physical being and our bodies, but he says what? Be separate from them in your actions, in your heart. Your heart, even if you're amongst other people that do not remember Allah, you remember Allah. And your actions, if they don't pray, you do pray. If they drink alcohol, you don't drink alcohol. So just because we're with them in speech and interact with them physically doesn't mean that we do not, uh, that that we start following them in their actions as well. Subhanallah. Because a man has what he earns and on the day of resurrection he will be with whomever he loves. Your actions and your heart dictate whom you love. Yeah. And, and look at this from Sayyidina Ali, and we'll end on this. Yeah, it's narrated from Yahya ibn Ju'da, who said, Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib, Allah Kareem, said, carriers of the Qur'an, memorizers of it, act according to it. Allahu Akbar, direct command, act according to the Qur'an. For the knowledgeable man, alim, is only one who knows, then he acts according to what he knows. This is a definition of knowledge from Sayyidina Ali, Allah Kareem. But how can a person of knowledge try and teach others when he hasn't learnt from that knowledge himself and implemented it, and whose knowledge is in accord with his action. There will be people whose knowledge will not pass below their collarbones, i.e. to their hearts, whose inner selves, in other words, it remains in the brain. It doesn't penetrate the heart, doesn't penetrate the limbs, doesn't come from the brain. If you notice, look, the brain is up here. The eyes are below it, the ears are below it, the mouth is below it. It stays up here. It doesn't change the way they listen to things and what they listen to. It doesn't change how they control their eyes and what they watch. It doesn't go down to their mouth to be able to influence and guide how should they should speak. Allahu Akbar. Yeah. Allah Allah. Whose inner selves are at variance with their appearances 
and whose actions are at variance with their knowledge. They will sit in circles competing for superiority with each other so to such an extent that a man will become angry at a man who sits beside him because he sits be, beside another and leaves him. You know, this is about position. Why I should be sat at the front. Nobody else should sit next to me. Those, their actions in these assemblies of theirs will not rise up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. Also narrated from Sayyidina Ali, a tawfiq being directed by Allah to the right course is the best leader. Good character is the best associate. Subhanallah. Good character is the best associate. The intellect is the best companion. Courtesy, the best inheritance. And there is no loneliness worse than conceit. You see immense wisdom in Sayyidina Ali. Yeah. Yeah, Sayyidina Ali, people would come to him to resolve issues. Yeah. Uh, Allahu Akbar. Beautiful book to, to read some of the sayings of Sayyidina Ali and understand his depth of knowledge. You know, he was a man of immense knowledge and immense spirituality. A man of great asceticism, connected with this dunya. No ego. People think of him as being brave and, and putting his enemies to the sword. Sayyidina Ali Karam Allah Kareem put his own enemy, his nafs to the sword before he put any other enemy to the sword. He was in control of himself. Man of immense power and strength. Man who ripped out the door of Khaybar by himself. Mentioned in here, when he ripped out the door of Khaybar, that peep eight of the Sahaba, some narrations, 40 of them tried to lift it themselves, they couldn't do so. It's immense power. And this is another sign of his wilaya when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, My wali, that when he grasps, it is I who grasp. Subhanallah. And so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, for tawfiq. Inshallah, we, we thank uh, Shaykh Ridwan and the Al Hayat Trust for arranging this beautiful gathering and giving uh, this unworthy individual the, the, the barakah and the blessings and the immense sharaf to speak and mention. Sayyidina Ali Karam Allah Wajal Kareem. We, you know, this faqir cannot do justice to the topic of Sayyidina Ali Karam Allah Wajal Kareem. You know, he is a vast ocean that has no shores. You know, Sayyidina Ali. You know, we should have immense love for Sayyidina Ali. You know, we should ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala to reward him on our behalf and make Allah, may Allah allow us to see him in our dream state in this world and be with him in paradise in the hereafter. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. For surely he will be with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, his brother in this world and in the hereafter. Inshallah, we'll end with a dua. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he allows us to uh, donate, inshallah, for this beautiful project, the Al Hayat uh, Masjid that is being built and center. We request everybody, inshallah, to give life to institutions that disseminate the knowledge of Allah and His Messenger and the Quran. And, uh, and guide people in times of their difficulty and become a center of, of knowledge and learning, inshallah. You know, this is really a duty upon us that we uh, give uh, uh, victory and we give support to these kinds of institutions, inshallah. They are the epicenters of our communities. Without them, we as a Muslim community cannot fun function. We can function without the halal butchers. You know, we don't have to eat meat. We can function without the Asian supermarket. We can function without the Asian uh, clothes shops and the takeaways and the restaurants. That we can function with. You know, there's, there's still halal out there that we can eat and drink. We cannot function without centers of Islamic knowledge and scholars that we can turn to to guide us uh, in what we need to be doing in our daily self. We, we depend upon them. And if we were to calculate the benefit that our Islamic centers afford us and the imams and our teachers, what they give to us, it would run into the tens of thousands. Just imagine every time you ask a solicitor a question, how much they uh, uh, charge. You go to a private doctor for help and advice, how much they charge. You go to the pharmacy and you take medicine and, you, you know, the cost of education, private education that you may take. You add all of that up. Yeah. Or hiring a place where you can go to and, and you can worship and you can conduct your weddings and you can, you know, uh, have your events. You know, subhanAllah, you calculate all of that, you will see that the benefit that Islamic institutions and masajid give to us, the bill of that for us personally and how much we use of it and how much benefit we get it for, 
from it in our lifetime will run into the tens of thousands, if not the hundreds of thousands. And that's no exaggeration. You know? So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to support these centers. And that's an immense sharaf for us to have a part in these centers. You know, the shuyukh and the teachers, they do all the hard work. They, uh, they, they arrange for the building and they do the teaching and they do the advisory. We just give a bit of our money. Yeah, alhamdulillah, they do all of the hard work. May Allah reward them, inshallah. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward Shaykh Ridwan and his team. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them and increase them and use them for the service of his religion and the dissemination of the teachings of the Quran and the Sunnah and the teachings of the Ahl al-Bayt and the Sahaba and the Awliya and the Sadat. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. We make dua for all of those who in the last 24 hours have, have tra- transferred uh, our brother Yasser Ayyub. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless and raise the rank of his late grandparents. Grant them imen- uh, um, immense rank in Jannah, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And grant them ease in the Barzakh and give them ease uh, in the hereafter. Allow them to enter into paradise without any questioning, Ya Rabbil Alameen. An anonymous person who's donated who said, please accept this donation as Sadaqatul Jari in the name of my father-in-law, Muhammad Sadiq Banth. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise your father-in-law and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him immensely and shower him with his mercy. May Allah give you an increase in your risk, inshallah. Uh, Brother Ahmed from Southampton, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and your family for the donations that you have made. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless your family with goodness in this world and goodness in the hereafter. Bless you with all of your good intentions and remove any hardship from you and your beloved ones. Also for counselor brother Imran Hussein from High Wickham, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him and his family and his parents. May Allah allow him to serve the, the people in his constituency and all of those that he is responsible for. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow him to be a person who speaks the truth yeah, in every situation and be with the truth. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. May Allah bless his family and all of it and his parents, Ya Rabbil Alameen. We also have eight anonymous donations via just giving. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is the knower of the unseen, he knows that which is concealed and that which is even more hidden, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless these individuals. That just as they have given in uh, and have not declared their name, Ya Allah, we ask you to cover their sins and do not any do not allow anybody to know of them. And Ya Allah, we ask you, Ya Rabbil Alameen, that you reward them in a way that bewilders them with your giving, Ya Rabbil Alameen, that amazes them with your giving, Ya Rabbil Alameen, to them. And Ya Allah, we ask you specifically for du'as for the founders of this institution, Sheikh Ridwan Hussein and Ustad Sidra Ahmed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this venture successful, may it be, allow it to bear fruit. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give it sincerity. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it a means of benefit till the end of time, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ya Allah, make, use this center for your work and bring hearts closer to you, Ya Rabbil Alameen, through it. And bring hearts which do not believe in you to the belief in you and the love of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and his ahl al-bayt and sahaba and his awliya and, his, and, his, and the scholars and the ulama of this ummah, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And Ya Allah, we make special dua for our brothers and sisters around the world who are going through trials and tribulations and afflictions and oppression, especially our brothers in Palestine, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ya Allah, give them steadfastness and give them patience in what they're going through, Ya Rabbil Alameen, and allow them to stand up to the oppression and, and the injustice that they're going through. And Ya Allah, we ask you to allow us as Muslims collectively around the world to stand for that which is right and to stand for justice and to allow us to be a means of the alleviation of their difficulty and for the freedom of Masjid Al-Aqsa from the hands of the oppressors. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ya Allah, we ask you for that which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam would ask you for and we seek refuge in you from everything that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam would seek refuge from. And Ya Allah, we ask you to give us greater than what we ask for you for and give us greater protection than what we seek protection from. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Bijahi Sayyidil Mursaleen, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam wa Ahli Bayti wa Ashabihi Ajma'een. Al-Fatiha. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين يا كن عبد ويا كن استعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم الضالين آمين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين جزاكم الله خير السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته